Okay, everyone, people have asked and asked and asked. So, here's Alan's Toolbox Tour. Welcome to Toolbox Corner. All right. So, shall we start off in the big drawer? I think so. Okay, so in this drawer. Well, should we start by telling what, what this is? So, it says Mako on it, but it's actually Harbor Freight. It's actually a U.S. General. But I took this off of a Mako box I bought a while ago and uh, had to return it. So I kept my placard because I paid cash for that. So most people walk up and like, oh, you got a Mako? No, it's a U.S. General. So you don't need a big box to get you through. I've been working eight years out of this box alone. So Okay, all right. You don't need a name brand, name brand box. Box doesn't make the mechanic. The mechanic makes the box. So... This drawer, which used to be my socket drawer, I had to take all the sockets out because it was too heavy. In this drawer, we will start off with just a simple Mac AC leak detector with glasses and some core tools. So if I walk up to an AC job and I need to change something or do something, I can handle it. There's the part number on that one. I like this one. And it's not a, a dual gas. It only reads the one one uh, one thirty four. So it's not a one two three four YF. And then here is one of my uh, favorite diagnostic tools. It's my compression gauge set. Very simple, basic compression gauge set. Gets me everywhere I need to go. Very nice. There's that part number. So you can always buy the master sets. I don't find buying master sets I'll just buy the stuff as I need them because you never know what you're going to run into this is my fuel pressure gauge which does say master on it because this I did need a lot of different fuel parts for right so you got all your fittings up top straight in line fittings fuel pressure rail fittings your pressure gauges your adapters little hook to hang it with if you want extra o-rings this should actually be up here um, comes with extra hoses and another inline piece clamps extra caps boots and o-rings which is cool because these clips right here break really easy mm. these are like older ford style okay they clip around a metal hose a metal pipe like this and then it clamps over top of it and that's what holds it in place oh okay the top part of the clip breaks all the time gonna be a long video <laughs> yes sir 24 years of collecting tools and then we go over here and we have a uh, rear dip bearing and seal puller nice u.s general the oh, old yeah. u.s general old too. u.s general I've, I've had this for probably 28 years wow i've had this tool just keeps getting moved from box to box this piece, you know, it just kind of fits on a pump that fits on a screw gun. Oh, okay. So you, it's like a transfer pump. Okay. For it. Then I've got my, uh, these are the welding masks for my snap-ons, uh, oh, face wow. shields. So I can flip this over and it's dark tinted so you can weld with it. Yeah. So, had those, don't use them very much. I've got my, of course, my dye goggles. And it's bag. Yeah, I got to keep them scratched so they don't scratch up. Right? Nice. Kind of keep them clean. That way you can see what you're doing. Then we have <laughs> this little ratchet right here, this little torque wrench, has probably put together 500 Subaru motors. This one Mako torque wrench. Um, it's out of calibration. We don't have a Mako man, so I can't send it in. And I don't want to send it in. I'll just buy a new one. <laughs> um, this piece here goes on to my light bar for my underhood light oh yes the one i got from mac mac tools there's the part number this runs with it's just in case you got a really big hood or something right? right haven't had to use it yet and those run with these lights here oh okay these ones nice. which are kind of cool because it has this button here so if i hit this button while it's on and i walk away it doesn't sense any motion the light shuts off as soon as you walk up to the car again, the light automatically comes back on. 
it doesn't work like your automatic on and offs like the headlamps have. Right. Or if you're ratcheting something, it'll light will flicker on and off. So I like those. Because it's just really a good. motion yeah. sensor. It's really good because I can leave that light on all day and walk away. As soon as I come around the edge of the car, boom, that light's on again. Nice. Then we have my Snap-on. Uh, this is my soldering tool. Oh, yeah, the little butane one. My little butane soldering tool. Um, it's also does for uh, heat shrink and stuff. But mainly I just use it for solder. Don't do a lot of soldering, but that's what I use it for. Oh, and this is a great little find, man. Calvan Tools Wi-Fi Boroscope. Yep. Part number 84. Yep. This little sucker right here has been the best $70 investment I think I've made. Um, just that one the other day where the uh, cylinder went down, right? Oh, yeah, on the 4.7 yeah, uh, Toyota. Toyota. It was a Nissan Toyota, Toyota. 4 on with the 4.7 yep. liter V8. Yep. There you go. It was the 4Runner. So what ended up happening is he lost all compression in cylinder two. I was able to stick this down in here, and even though this isn't a high dollar horoscope, get a very clean, clear picture of all the oil and stuff that was on top of that piston. So if you're looking for a good horoscope without spending two, three hundred, four hundred dollars or a thousand dollars, this was like 75, 80 bucks, if I remember right. Nice. Another good find on Ventura tools. Oh, this one's Calvan tools. Yeah, but I got it through Mac. Oh, you did? Yeah, I got this from Justin. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Justin was carrying this. So I know it, the Cal Van tools, but I got this on the Mack truck. Oh, okay. If I remember, I think I seen one on the Cornwell truck too. Yeah, Scott's got one on the Cornwell then, truck you know, also. We got rivets from Arbor Freight. Yep. You know, crazy crap like that. Uh, a flashlight I don't use. Um, there you go. This is my uh, bolt grip puller set. So this is for doing harmonic balancers, things like that, pulleys on certain things that you need to rip off the car. It comes with the cone so you don't uh, dink in the threads or anything, two different sizes, or a flat piece, which all just fits in here. Just like that, that goes up against your crank pulley. And then as this screws through here, it has the three bolts on and it pulls it right off. Nice. Great investment, great investment. Very when it nice. comes to things like this, you know, they rebrand these things. So, like, yeah, this may say Snap-on on it, but odds are it's probably a Lyle tool. Right, right. Which, you know, you don't have to buy the Snap-on. I'm a mechanic. They show up to my work, so uh, I don't have time to go out looking for tools and spend time on the Internet searching for stuff. So it works out better for me. Yep. And then this is my power probe. Probably fixed and wired. 300, 400 trailers with this. Got the extension for doing trailers, truck and trailer. Got the power probe. Clips, we're going straight to the battery. Your AC adapter, yeah. Your AC adapter for your cigarette lighter, in case you can't get to the battery. You can still use it. And then the probe tip. Oh, nice, look at that probe tip. Yep, I've ground that sucker down. <laughs> now, I bought this 2000 and and it still works the only problem I have with this thing is, is this button it doesn't ring itself back it should automatically roll back and sometimes it'll stick so you got to be pay attention to that Wow so you fry something. I know the power probe was out that long this is a power probe 3 I wonder what number they're on now I want to say like 10 really yeah they've had them out a long time oh wow I was working at Valley Tire and Brake who, who isn't even a company anymore in this town was here for probably 60 years and disappeared. Where well, are they gone now? Yep. They sold, they sold the company. The shop's still there, but the company, the owner sold. Oh, wow. So I believe now it's a detail shop and a small automotive shop, and they still have the oil change across the street. Oh, okay. That's drawer one. Now we go to drawer two. Okay. And in this drawer, I got a lot of miscellaneous stuff. Okay, some wrenches that I don't really, I've, this has taken more Subarus apart than I care to talk about because <laughs> all the pieces are uh, messed up, worn out, but it's a good wrench. It's a uh, 1214, getting bell housing bolts on a, uh, not bell housing, but a uh, torque converter bolts on a Subaru. Great wrench. Um, so that prompted me to buy these, then just buy the whole set because they don't make mountain anymore. This really? Is mountain. 
I've seen him on Justin's truck, mountain and like, wrenches. They started coming out because they, last time I went to go get this wrench in mountain, they sold me these easy rigs. Yeah, no, they've got mountains. Justin's okay. got them, yeah. Then they've, they've come back. But for a few years, I couldn't get this wrench. I had to buy an easy wrench. Really? To replace okay. it. So I think it was because they kept busting. But again, like, here's the easy red version of it. But this is an 810. Two wrenches that you use all the time on a Subaru. 1214 and an 810. Do anything. Then I got my triple square sockets. Head bolts. Head bolts, uh, axles on Volkswagens. Oh, yeah, I just did one on a Mercedes. Yeah, yeah. Mercedes alignment stuff. Actually, no, Mercedes was e torques Never mind, I was an e torques on uh, the Mercedes. The Mercedes. Some of the back end of the Mercedes on the toes and uh, camber adjustments on the rear of a car are triple square. Yep. So you got to use triple square on that. Um, then I've got, I know the wrenches are missing in here, but I have, they'll be on further in the video. They're in here. Um, but these are my big gear wrenches from 21 to 25. Nice. So I keep the 21, 22, and 24 in my box because I use those all the time. Right, right. All the time. And then, you know, we just got old tools that I've had forever. It's probably one of the first uh, 3 8 uh, hex drive sockets I got for taking old Chevy brake caliper bolts out. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Probably taking 2 billion of those things out with this socket. <laughs> um, Again, just a lot of miscellaneous stuff that I've had over the years that I've had to replace, things I've started out with. Um, these are for my socket tray, they're replacements for the twist locks. Oh, yes. For my socket, so I bought a bunch of extra of those. And then the greatest tool, antenna sockets. I got a set of these in here. Where they're all at, I don't know, but uh, somewhere in here. Oh, here's the other two. Full set of antenna sockets. Nice. So you can take the old school antennas apart. You don't need them much anymore, but they still sell the parts. So um, this is my ah, my serpent, serpentine belt tool. Yep, from Mac Tools. Yeah, and a lot of these uh, sockets that you see miscellaneous in here are things that I had for working on Subarus. And they were just easy. I could keep them out and uh, just use them all the time. So like I've got, that's not for the Subaru, but this is Subaru, all these sockets oh yeah yeah all Subaru stuff Subaru heads uh, valve covers things like that all stuff I picked up working on Subies and they're all snap-on I see yeah yeah I I have no problem um, just buying one socket I have no problem doing it if I need a socket a 12 millimeter 12 volt and I don't need the whole set I'm not gonna buy it I'm just gonna buy the socket right that's why you see a lot of these sockets that I have that are just singular sockets not gonna buy the set. Why should I spend six hundred dollars on a set when I need two sockets that are twenty-five bucks a piece? Yeah, fifty bucks for yeah. the two you'll use. And I use them all the time. Whenever I work on a Subaru, those sockets come out of my box. Third drawer. These are all my wrenches. Wow. This set and this set right here, I bought in Indianapolis, Indiana, for nineteen dollars a piece. Craftsman. Craftsman. At a at a Sears. And back east, Sears before they closed down was like. The size of our mall they were huge in their tool department wow. there was like two floors one was all like lawn and garden equipment and the other was all like hand tools wow so got got these in a bargain bin discount nice that's pretty cool yeah and then of course you know you you get little fill-ins eight millimeters seven millimeters put a mat cone and stuff yeah. on there yeah you get some little wrenches here just to kind of fill in the gaps nine millimeter i don't know why here's the question what are we going to do with all these nine millimeters I don't know. Because the only thing I know thing. that takes the 9 millimeter would be a old Ford, 90s Ford battery cable. <laughs> we got Freeloader over here. All day? Yeah, because I'm collecting the money at the counter and I'm not really writing it up. I'm going to put it in my pocket, you know, because I need to feed my kids. <laughs> you know? This is my first set of uh, gear wrenches. Oh, nice. Actual gear wrench. This was uh, one of my first tool truck purchases. Uh, All right. So, uh couple weeks have gone by stubby snap-ons here I've got my blue point standard snap-ons I bought specifically for working on my 72 Chevy um, then this is one of my first set of gear wrenches I've ever bought this was like the first sets that came out you couldn't get big giant wrenches they just came in sets like this so these are probably 20 years old oh wow I want to say yeah there they are 
your ends. Yeah, and you can tell I've definitely used them because like this gets the speed sensor on an old Subaru transmission. I had to grind oh, yeah. it down. So <laughs> I had to modify it to make it work for other jobs. Right. These were my very first set of wrenches. My Craftsman Standard and Metric. I bought these when I first started in, in Indianapolis. Um, I bought them at Sears. 15 bucks for both sets. Nice. Back in 2000. Then I just got... This is one of my favorite. This is a, what they call a profile or a pass-through. When they originally came out, they were called profiles. So it's the nut down there. Right. And then that goes through for your longer bolts. Just click it right in there and it locks in. Bolt goes through and you can sit there and tighten shock towers, all kinds of stuff with this, oh, nice. with this thing. It is locking, so it does click onto it. Reversible flex head with a lock on it so you can lock it in different positions that you want, index it. Um, I really like this. Yeah. Had it for a long time. It even comes with, with the extension for a pass through. Oh, wow. So, that is pretty neat. And uh, don't know what exactly I would use that for because it's not really a pass through. <laughs> Regular sockets, I guess. I guess. But, yeah. But it was included. That's cool. Then I've also got my first, uh, this is my tensioner tool, very first tensioner tool. Oh, nice. There it is, all bits to it. Yep, all Pretty the parts cool. to it. Then um, I got this for, for specifically for 2000 Chrysler minivans, getting the strut tower oh. bolts that are up underneath the cage. What the? That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Little T-handle, you put it on there, you can uh, put it like this and fucking hit it there with a hammer. Wow. And it breaks things loose. You can pull it, push it, whatever. It's a great little wrench for those specific jobs. But that's all I ever used it for. I've never used it for anything else. Oh, wow. Very specific. Oh, and then the two different size Chevy battery wrenches. Oh, yeah. For the side post batteries. Yep. Uh, Reversible. Uh, yep. Always makes it nice. Gotta Always. love the side posts. Sometimes <laughs> I've taken these, like... Um, and put a regular uh, bit in it, like an Allen bit. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right? And then use these for like BMW and Mercedes Benz on the rear calipers where you can't get into there with a socket and even the wobble socket, even the ball socket on the end, you yeah. can get to it. You can fit the bit in there, put this there, and still get the caliper bracket bolt. Oh, perfect. Very nice. All right, on to the next drawer. This is my screwdriver and uh, hose pick drawer. Yeah. Got all my hose picks, all my screwdrivers. Some more bits here. Yeah, these are Allen's and Torx bit ball sockets. Nice. Love those. Uh, Chevy tensioner, uh, stretch belt. Or use a zip tie. <laughs> yeah, but if you actually buy the AC Delco stretch belt for the AC, it comes with it. Oh, really? Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> they, they started putting it in there. Oh, nice. That's my, good. This is my snap-on um, belt removal and installer oh, for nice. stretch belts. Nice. It doesn't work with everything, but it, it's gotten me through. Yeah, on that 5-liter Mustang, it did not work, yeah. <laughs> I remember. And then, uh, you know, I got my bottle opener from Mac, you know, because uh, I don't drink anymore, but uh, Soda. I cold root beer yep. every now and then comes in handy. Very but, nice. Uh, my dental pick from when I used to have to clean Subaru rings. Oh, yeah. And then the oil ring. Right, all right. around on the piston, all the ringlands. Yep. Yep. And then get all around and clean everything out because they would get all sludged up and kill the motor. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, spark plug gap tool. Oh, we actually had these made by a machinist. This is for the, on a Subaru, this is for the advanced timing. On, not on the advanced timing, but on the uh, intake valve for VVT. There's a little clip in a spring. This grabs the clip and undoes it so you don't have to try to bend it or anything like that oh wow yeah very special tool the, to buy the tool was like 200 bucks the guy uh, that i did his head gasket job made me 20 of these for me and the guys that i worked with uh for like 10 bucks oh nice <laughs> that's cool uh a valve adjustment oh, 10 yeah. millimeter valve adjustment tool really great you get it on the nut you can break the nut loose make your valve adjustment tighten it back down and you don't have to have two or three different tools. It's all in one. Yeah, no, that makes a lot Perfect. easier, more um, precise. I believe this was for a tensioner, a timing tensioner. This held the, the pin in. Uh, I don't know why I have it other than it's just sitting in my drum drawer. <laughs> now, I found these at the bottom of a lake. Uh, I caught a toolbox. Really? And this is what was in there. This, and I don't even think I have the other ones anymore. 
That was in the toolbox at the bottom of a lake. Yep, That's pretty awesome. Much. Pretty much. I hooked it up with, with some uh, really stiff line. That yeah. I, had, I think it was like 50 pound test, and I pulled it up. I found that. There was a bunch of some wrenches, some other things. Oh, there. nice. Obviously, fell off the back of somebody's boat while they were working on it on the lake. Yeah. Um, oh, this is probably a good thing to go over. I don't see a lot of people going over this. This is a magnetizer. So, oh, if you have yes. a screwdriver that you want magnetized, I don't know if that'll actually pick it up. Uh, let's try a different one. Let's try the washer or something. Let's try an easy, easy nut. You take your screwdriver and you run it in inside here. Just rub it back and forth as many times as you can without stabbing yourself, like I'm doing. And then it's supposed to magnetize it. It's probably old. I've had it for 30 years. Oh, it. it was my dad's, and he gave it to me. But it's also to, it's just to magnetize stuff. I use it for um, oh, pocket screwdrivers. Right when the pocket screwdriver and you got a little clip or something you need to get and you don't have a magnet on it, you can burn it and pick it up but that's there it is it's working See? it's just the nuts heavy yeah it's just a heavy nut but it yeah. does want to pick it up right and then you take and you rub it on the outside and it goes away and it demagnetizes it yep See, nothing so always a good little tool to have and especially you drop a little screw or something try not to stab yourself yeah um all snap-on screwdrivers yeah, so here so i bought the snap-on torx screwdrivers and the standard with the phillips head screwdrivers nice. um a long time ago because I, I had a bunch of old screwdrivers see this is what i had right here old screwdrivers like this this thing right here has blown apart actually split more trans subaru motors and trannies than you'd ever believe that's why the handle's so busted up because <laughs> i just beat the ever-loving crap out of it oh um, but i had the I got these off of, out of a magazine when I was like 19 and first starting out, and I just got tired of using them because they weren't working very well, stripping everything out. So finally, I ended up buying these. Oh, nice. And then you have your dry belt router. Yep. You get your dry belt in there and down, and you can route it without getting your hands all cut up. Lazy man's work. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now we're getting in the excitement drawer here. Um, it's a mess. There's no organization to this drawer. Um, I've got files, nice snap-on files. Oh yeah, look at them. Love these things, they work really good, especially if you need to use this to clean up like a threads on a bolt. Yep. Works really good if you just have like one thread and you don't have a thread chaser or anything. And this is the drawer, this is like air tools of despair. I only use several of them. I've got my air drill. Nice Mac tools air drill. I've got my die grinders, my 3 8 ratchets, my saws, uh, another die grinder, one of my first impact guns, blue point. Oh, nice. Half inch. Um, I don't know how many people remember this, but here you go. The IR Lightning. They had the Thunder Land. half inch, yeah. and they had the Lightning ratchet. This thing was quick. A lot of torque in it. Can Still I? work? Uh, probably. You could bust it down to half by pulling that switch down or pull it up. It's full throttle. There, it's half throttle. Oh, nice. So um, I'm sure it still works, but it, it's it's really old. It's worked on a lot of cars. I think I bought this in 2002. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, Air tool greaser. Nice. Good right. Have. Very good uh, Mako 3 8 impact. Taking apart of. I've taken part, there isn't anything I haven't taken apart on a Subaru with this gun. Oh wow. I've pulled a complete motor apart with this gun. That's how powerful this gun is. I love this gun. It's just the tip end broke off that has the retainer on it. So I got to order a new handbill. Works like great, it's one of my favorites. Uh, the handle for my drill, I think. No, this is the handle for my drill. Here. Oh, nice, nice. Old uh, quick, quick chucks for my air hammer. Oh, nice. Uh then we have, we'll start getting into air hammer bits. Oh, one last thing. What is this? This is a bad memory saver. Oh, wow. From Snap-on. Nice, nice. Does and it... if there's any problems with the car, the OBD2 connector, this will not work. It will not work at all. It will not keep memory in the car. Oh. Not like the ones you plug into, uh, unlike this one here. Oh, well, you just hook up to a jumper pack? Yep, you just hook it up to a jumper pack, Yeah, and, it, and it's good to go. 
this one will not do that. If there's any problem on the car side of it, it'll shut off and it won't. won't so in other words, it's not that good? No, I do not recommend this. It was an impulse buy and I probably shouldn't have bought it. <laughs> um, so now we're into air hammer attachments. These are my extended, comes with aluminum. Wow. Replaceable tip for those jobs where you have to have a little, uh, little finesse. It comes with a steel one super long and it also comes with a plastic one. Oh, nice that is really cool yeah, so you don't have to mar them i use these for getting axles out like cv axles when you got a long reach oh get yeah in there with a pry bar i'll yeah. get in there with that and drive it right out nice this oh, oh this is my little baby say hello to my little friend one of the best power steering pump pulley pullers and installers i've ever owned wow this is this piece it's got both side on one. You just hold it with the wrench, turn in the anvil with a little puck in it. Boom, pulls it right off every time. I've literally done it on the ground like this in my hands. That's how easy this, this tool works. If really? you use the OTC one, you have to have it in the car. You have to have it in a vise because it moves everything around too much. Right. This one doesn't. Holds with a 22 millimeter wrench in the center. And the last one out the gate. And a 13 millimeter, yeah. Yeah, and then a 13 millimeter. <laughs> And the end. All right. So yeah, now, no, that is very nice. Now we get into quick disconnect tools. This is my quick disconnect set. All right. Very Beautiful. cool. Master set by Blue Point. Very nice. Transmission and oil cooler line quick disconnects. Went through that. Oh, quick disconnects for AC lines. The old school ones, you don't use these much anymore. GM and Chrysler dampener puller. Oh, nice. For those ones where you have the small short teeth to get in. Oh, yep, it just gets right little, over there. Little, little tiny and barely any room to get in there. Yeah, Works perfect, I love this tool, great tool. Used it a ton of times. Nice blue point one right there. Yep. Very cool. It, it's it's okay to buy the blue point. You don't have to buy the name brand stuff. All yeah, the time. I've got all some all blue point time. stuff, it, it works, works great. Yeah, my impact screwdriver. Oh, nice. Uh, snap on. I always keep an extra number two Phillips head because they that's the most common one they use for rotors. Right, and it, it wears all out. The time. Yeah. All the time. Yeah, you no. Fix it and you'll break it. So finally, I talked to the snap on guy and he started leaving me an extra bit. Oh, nice. Which, I guess, since they're closing up shop, I think we're going to have to do we're a part two. Day. We're going to have to put a part, this yeah. part three. Part <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is going to be a part one of Alan's Toolbox Tour. Stay tuned for part two and stay tuned for mine. So, yep. thanks for watching.